Praise the Lord, everyone. We welcome you to the CTC Bloomington Resurrection Program 2023. This is brought to you on behalf of the BFF Sunday School Department. The theme this year is Rise, Jesus is Alive. We invite you to come along for the ride as we creatively share with you the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But before we dive into the production, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to glorify you. Touch every person watching this right now. We pray that they are blessed by this production, that they are touched by it. You get all the glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We hope you enjoy the show. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. They hung his head. For me he died, that's love. Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I did not see you there. Well, hello, friends. If you're wondering what I'm referring to, take a stroll with me and watch as we unveil a beautiful, amazing, life-changing story where one man's act of obedience, love, selflessness, and bravery set the captive free by breaking the chains of bondage. That's right, for people like you and me. So come on, friends, grab your Bibles and turn with me through the pages of Luke chapter 23, verse 33 and 38 and 44 through 46. As Jesus is crucified, let's explore some of the most physically and emotionally challenging obstacles Jesus faced and overcame right in the face of adversity. Take a look at some of the most greatest sacrifices he made just for you and me. So we would no longer have to be enslaved to our sins, but instead live a life of grace, freedom, and victory. <laughs> now, sing it with me this time, my friends. They hung him high, they stretched him wide, they hung his head, for me he died, that's love. Oh, but wait, he rose again. Rise again, my friend. Jesus is alive. Good morning. We interrupt your regularly scheduled program with a breaking news alert. This just in, Jesus has been crucified. Yes, you heard me correctly. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph and Mary, and the son of God was nailed to the cross just a few moments ago. We know crucifixion is one of the most painful and humiliating ways to die. And as of a few moments ago, this has become Jesus' reality. Please grant us a few moments as we give you a lot more information about what has just happened. Wait a minute. We have a couple of eyewitnesses who were able to be patched in. Both the thieves that were on the cross next to Jesus has agreed to give us a statement. I can only imagine what they have to say and what they want to share with the world. Stay tuned. His name is Jesus. The man that is hanging beside me is Jesus. The same Jesus who I heard has been going to different towns, healing people from all sorts of illnesses. His name is Jesus. The man whose hands are outstretched just as wide as mine, but something tells me he is not like me. I deserve to be here. I committed a crime, and now it's time for me to do the time and be hung on the street for the world to see. 
But the man next to me, his name is Jesus. And from what I hear, he didn't do anything to deserve this sort of death. Not crucifixion. He didn't do anything to deserve this sort of treatment. All this negative attention should be aimed towards a thief like myself. But as I hang beside him, I see him look through his bruised eyes and at the people who hung me and him up. It's almost like his eyes were filled with not hate, but with love. I even saw him painfully open his mouth and say, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. The man bes that I'm hanging beside is Jesus, and something tells me that the world will never forget his name. I feel in my heart that once he dies, the world will never be the same. There is someone to the left of Jesus, and I'm on his right side. I can't see everything that's happening, but I can tell it's chaos outside. People can't stop staring at our three crosses hanging for a world to see. But I can tell they aren't looking at the others, dude, and they aren't looking at me. They are staring at the man in the center, Jesus. I can glance over and see that while I'm in utter and complete panic, he is not. I would be furious to see people taking my clothes, but he simply watched while soldiers parted his clothes and cast lots. We are not the same. I am the one who stole. But this man seems to be honest and only wants to see broken people made whole. Soldiers mocked him, their taunting tones piercing our ears, saying things like, He saved others, let him save himself. But something tells me this man, Jesus, has no intention of getting off this cross. He seems so tired, yet so focused, so hurt, so full of love, as I hang beside him. They even tried to taunt him with vinegar, and are saying things like, You save yourself if you are really the king of the Jews. But this man, Jesus, refused. I don't understand it. I can't explain it. But this man, Jesus, is not like me. I wanted him to save all three of us, but he won't do it. It's like his mind was on something bigger than this moment of pain. All I know is I won't ever forget this man's name, Jesus. This is Anchor Woman Thomas coming to you live right outside Jerusalem. I am standing in a place called Golgotha the skull-shaped hill where Jesus has been crucified. We just heard accounts from the thieves that were crucified on either side of Jesus, and we are gathering more intel. News network sources say they have located items that are tied to Jesus' crucifixion and the crucial moments that preceded his death. These items include a dice, a wooden sign, nails, and a cross. How are these things tied together? And how do they play in Jesus' story? Stay tuned to discover more. Jesus being crucified had to be one of the most unbelievable moments I have ever witnessed. I couldn't believe that this same man who walked from place to place with his disciples, healing, preaching, and feeding people was now hanging on a cross, his body severely beaten and his face nearly disfigured. I could look at his face and barely recognize it. I couldn't take it, so I had to leave. As I was walking away, I couldn't believe my eyes. Soldiers were casting lots, rolling dice, to determine who got to keep this poor man's garments. Are they serious? I shook my head and walked away, but I cannot get the picture of the dice out of my head. While this man was suffering on the cross, these men were laughing and joking, casting lots for his clothes like he was already dead. But if you ask me, this man Jesus is different. I saw so many things when Jesus was being crucified, but the one thing I can't get out of my head is the sign that was hanging above him. I remember it because it wasn't just written in one language, it was written in three different languages. In Greek, Latin, and Hebrew languages, the sign said, This is the King of the Jews. Whoever wrote this really wanted people to know that this wasn't just someone who called himself a king, but that he actually was a king. 
I've seen a lot of things in my life, but that sign will stick with me forever. What kind of king is this? What kind of king lets himself be crucified? What kind of king dies on the cross so openly with the world watching? What kind of king is this man? Some people say not to pay attention to the sign, but I can't get it out of my head because I believe that sign was true. Jesus really is king. I know you may have heard other people talking about what they saw at the sight of Jesus' crucifixion, but I bet no one mentioned those nails. Those nails were rusted, jagged, and sharp. To see the soldiers grab all these nails and maliciously pierce Jesus to the cross were painful to watch. I mean, I've seen crucifixions before. Uh, I've even watched as the two thieves were crucified next to Jesus. But when Jesus was being nailed to the cross, he just looked so, so innocent, so kind, so humble almost like a lamb who was sacrificing himself. I know, I know, I, I probably sound crazy, but when I saw the pain settle into Jesus' face, I thought that this wasn't right. This man probably is just who he said he is. What is really bizarre is that even though I saw the nails being hammered into his hands and feet, I feel like the nails were not truly holding Jesus to the cross. The nails were big, but I feel like the love I saw in Jesus' heart was bigger. Crazy, I know. If you had been there, maybe you would have seen what I saw. It wasn't the nails that held him. The cross, that's what I remember the most. Just imagine a huge, solid wooden cross with a frail body hanging on it. I mean, in comparison to this beaten body, the cross looked massive. Jesus' blood-stained cross was hard to miss. Even when darkness came and the sun was darkened, the veil of the temple was torn, but you could still make out that cross. When Jesus was dying, he cried with a loud voice, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. When he said this, his voice cut through the air and grabbed the attention of all around him. This was unlike any other crucifixion I have ever seen. I feel like people will be talking about this moment for a long time. I wouldn't be surprised if the cross became a symbol for something, almost like a reminder of what happened to Jesus today. It was crazy. Every time I close my eyes, I see his cross, Jesus' cross. I'll probably remember it for the rest of my life because it was so bloody yet so beautiful. <laughs> what a sight to behold. For those of you who have been watching this very special breaking news report, listen, we've come to the end of our time together. We just had to tell you, though, the events that have led up to Jesus's crucifixion. We were able to talk to the two thieves who were hanging on either side of him on the cross. We also spoke with key eyewitnesses who identified different items that were connected to Jesus's death. I can confirm, sources just confirmed that Jesus has taken his last breath and is now deceased. What will happen next with this king? Some people are still walking around saying that he was a regular person, but in light of everything that has happened today, and looking more into the evidence that has been collected, I think we can say that he was not a regular person. What happens next, who knows? Let's stay tuned. There was a coldness in the air that no fire could warm to soothe. The sting of eternal pain weighed thick as fog caused by grief and disbelief. Confusion entered their thoughts from the trauma that occurred two days prior that neither of the women spoke as they gathered the spices preparing to anoint Jesus' body. What happens next perplexed them, their eyes widened with shock and awe of what they saw, an empty tomb. Could the prophecy be true? 
Who rolled the stone away where he laid? Who was this young man dressed in all white that shook them with such fright? Had their ears heard him right? He is risen? He isn't here? How could he just disappear? Filled with curiosity and confusion, they followed his direction as they head to Galilee to tell his disciples and Peter what they just witnessed with excited witness. Picture this, two women, Mary and Mary, three days after they watched Jesus be brutally beaten, whipped, spat on, with the crown of thorn on his head, them rolling the die for the clothes that they would wear of Jesus, them mocking him and ridiculing him, and them watching Jesus, King of the Jews, take his last breath. Imagine the heartache. Imagine the heartbreak. Imagine the grief that ripped their hearts. Yet see them willing to go three days later with spices. Hear the conversation of two willing women to bless the body of Jesus. Hear them talking. How are we gonna roll the stone away? Yet they were willing. And when these two willing women get there, what do they see? Imagine the shock. The stone is rolled away, but imagine even the more shock. A young man dressed in white, the body of Jesus not there. What? Where is our savior? Where is the king of the Jews? Here the angels speak. Fear not. Jesus is not here. Jesus has risen. Just like he said he would. Just like he has said he would. He has risen. See the empty spot where his body once lay. Feel the confusion of these two women. Yes, he said it, but oh my God, it's really real and he's really gone. See it. See the shock and the confusion all at the same time. Their hearts wanting to rejoice, yet them not really understanding what their eyes see. And then hear the angels say, go tell the disciples and Peter, Jesus has risen. Just like he said he would. Jesus has risen. He has shed the grave clothes. Just like he said he would. Jesus is no longer dead, but he is alive. We are rejoicing because Jesus, our Savior, has risen. He is alive. And Mary's to spot boss races to to anoint Jesus' body. They ran to the tomb and saw an angel inside. The angel said, Jesus is reason he is not here. The Lord Jesus delivered me from seven demons. So yes, I am devoted to him. I witnessed Jesus' death and resurrection. And I arrived at the tomb to anoint Jesus' body with the sweet smelling spices. On the way over, I was talking to the other Mary, mother of James, about who will roll the stone away from from the entrance of the tomb because that thing weighed a ton. Well, to my surprise, we looked and saw that the great stone was rolled away. I walked right in and saw a man sitting on the right side, dressed all in white. My jaw dropped and my heart was racing. It was astonishing. As I entered this tomb, I saw this angel. He said, don't be afraid. My hands were shaking and I ran away. That's all I can remember. Do not be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, the one that they nailed to the cross. He's not here. He has risen from the dead. As you can see, the tomb is empty. But go and tell his disciples and Peter that he has gone to Galilee 
just like he told you before he died. He is not here. Jesus Christ rose from the grave so that you can live. Jesus rose so that you can have power. Jesus rose from the grave so that you can have authority. Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave so that you can have victory and dominion. Mark 16, 6 declares that the grave that once was filled with the crucified Jesus, now it laid empty because he rose. Ooh, hallelujah. He conquered the grave so that you can conquer every area of your life. There is no grave that can hold Christ down. Death could not tie him down. Death could not defeat him. Jesus Christ is Lord over all. He is king over all. He rules, he reigns, and he has all power, authority, and dominion in his hands. And Mark 16, 6, notice what the angel said to the visitors when they approached the grave of Jesus. And he said to them, don't be afraid. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they lay. Fear not. There is no fear in Christ. God has power over fear. There is no anxiety in him. When you are in Christ, the bondage of depression cannot hold you down. When you are in Christ, the spirit of heaviness cannot keep you bound. There is no bondage in him. There is no condemnation in him. He rose for your victory. He rose for your deliverance. Jesus rose to set you free. <laughs> the past is gone, y'all. Jesus rose from the grave so that you can have everlasting life. There is no chain that can bind you. No yoke can choke you. Isaiah 10, 27 declares, And it shall come to pass in that day, that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder, and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. It's time, y'all. It's time to come out of your heartache. It's time to come out of your depression. It's time to come out of your sickness. In the name of Jesus, rise out of your grave. I can't believe what I just heard. I mean, and there are others that are in disbelief. Talk about the opportune time to capture your thoughts. Hmm. Well, Jesus said that they wouldn't believe. Well, let's not just sit around here because we're at the foot of the cliff. So we might as well dive back in because there is talk that the tomb was empty. Yes, you heard it correct. The tomb was empty. And if you know the scriptures, that means the prophecies are being fulfilled. You know, between me and you, there's a whole world that is going to need to hear this good news. So I can't wait to see what happens next. Come with me as we observe the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 28 verses 16 through 18 and Mark chapter 16 verses 15 through 19. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today, today. Said I woke up to the summer shining through. Calling on my friends, asking what's the move. Feeling a little different, I'm on something new. Today, today. I ain't gonna let 
no clouds get in my way the only road i'm walking is the one i pick catch me sitting in the sun no top of shade today today This is the day that the Lord has made And I ain't gonna let it slip away I'm gonna be joyful Yes I am, yes I am I'm gonna be joyful Today I'm gonna be joyful I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, gonna be Jesus said in John 16, I tell you the truth, you will cry and be sad, but your sadness will become joy, and no one will be able to take away your joy. But your but sorrow, your sorrow shall, be shall be turned into, into joy. joy. Have you heard? Joy is here! Joy is here! After Jesus had risen, he told his disciples to go to the mountain. Even though they saw him with their own eyes, some did not believe. But others did, and they worshipped him. He told them he had all the power in heaven and in earth. He told them to tell the good news. Make disciples. Baptize them. So people can be filled with the Holy Ghost. So people could be healed. Jesus died and rose for you, and joy is here. Joy is here. Joy is here. He has a